done. All right, let's get started. We'll stop the Butterball ad here. Okay, so if you're in uh, my class yesterday, you already heard me talk about this, or if you're in the last class on Wednesday, maybe you heard me talk about this, but I wanna make sure you guys saw the NSFE assignment. Oh, yeah. So just want to make sure you guys saw this. So it's the not so final exam project, which is um, kind of, it, it's not really a final, it's kind of a flipped final, but you go back and you can go into all the things you submitted on Canvas. You could go into your own notes, you could go into your design thinking stuff but I need you to go back and kind of cull through and find 10 highlights of the semester and just make sure you follow this. I won't go through it all in detail, but make sure you follow this clearly because this is worth a lot of points. It's worth like twice as much as anything else. It's kind of gonna go in the space of a final exam. This is gonna be due before our last class period together so that we can discuss the paragraph you're gonna write about your biggest takeaway or thing you enjoyed the most. And then when it, when Thanksgiving happens, you're totally done with class, no final after that, whatever. So a little bit more work, but I'm also giving it to you now so you could work on it whenever. It, I mean, you can take stuff that you're learning even this week and you can throw it in there, but there does have to be kind of a cross section of the whole semester too. So I want you to go back and look at, oh, what did we talk about in the first couple of weeks, stuff like that. So pretty straightforward. I'm doing this for all my classes as opposed to doing a final exam. I, I feel like I win if you go back and look at the most important things. So that's that's you actually seeing it, engaging with it, thinking about it, writing it up. I did throw another uh, cute assignment in there. Let me see. Um, a reading assignment. It just dropped this morning. Uh, let's see here. Uh, read the paper cover to cover. So instead of going to um, going, you know, online for any resources or going to the library or JSTOR or whatever, uh, I want you to buy a paper this weekend. You can buy today's paper, Saturdays or Sundays. All right. So if you don't buy a paper by Sunday, you're toast on this assignment already because you cannot do the online edition and you're probably not going to find a Sunday paper anywhere. Uh, you might have to go like to your friend's parakeet bird cage and pull it out. And, but you need to purchase a paper this weekend. If you're really broke and you don't have the two bucks for it, let me know and I will loan you $2 at low interest. Uh, online edition doesn't count. You can go to any Casey's, whatever. They have like five different papers available. You can grab any one of those. Um, you know, you might wanna, you know, if it was me, I might not grab the Wall Street Journal because the print is much smaller and the articles are a lot more technical. So if you're, you know, looking for a little light reading, USA Today would be easier. If you're looking for a little more local stuff, Des Moines Register, uh, Wall Street Journal has a lot more businessy stuff, but you have to read the paper cover to cover the way my grandpa used to do. Uh, every story, every editorial, every advertisement, even the classifieds and comics. So if you get the Sunday paper, you'll have a whole section of comics, but you're gonna have a lot more of everything else. Um, the only thing you can skip are the horoscopes, all right? Write a short summary of your reading, including one paragraph about your impression of the election coverage. So all the papers are gonna be loaded with election stuff, right? So just one paragraph on your impression of that. One paragraph about the most interesting article you read. So in the whole paper, there's gonna be probably 20 articles, 30 articles that you'll read plus some editorials. One of those is gonna actually be interesting to you, hopefully. Write a, a short summary of that. And then finally, one paragraph summarizing some of the themes you see in the paper. So, you know, election is gonna be a big theme, but there might also be other themes. The paper sometimes will organize a whole section based on one theme. So the uh, lifestyle section might all be about Black History Month or something like that. And so you can identify those themes. So just in one paragraph, you might have a handful of themes in the whole paper. Include which paper you read, the day, date, edition, how long did it take you to read it in its entirety? So this kind of helps me to know that you actually did read it because if you say five minutes, then I'll know you didn't read it cover to cover. 
I would guess it's going to take you no less than 45 minutes, unless you're just a really fast newspaper person. But I doubt any of you are because you're not 80 years old. Um, bring the paper to class with you next Wednesday and Friday. So what we'll do is Wednesday, half of you will just share, hey, this is my one thing. I got out of the paper. This is the paper I read. So you got to bring it with you Wednesday and Friday. And we'll have guests in here on Friday. So, um, And this is worth more points than the usual uh, re read and review um, assignment. So don't underestimate it. And I am going to uh, grade it. Like, so if you have fluffy, you know, if your stuff is written in a way that you and I both know, you probably didn't really, really, you know, put your whole heart into it, then I can't give you all the points. So, all righty. So that one just dropped this morning and it's due next Wednesday before class, but some people won't present until Friday next week. And now I'll just take up the first few minutes of class. Any questions about this? Anyone know who this is? Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Doctor Who. Second best doctor. You know, David Tennant. Matt Smith. Yeah, see, I couldn't get into him. Like, I just... I didn't like him at first, but... Uh, yeah, but I, I, like think, I think it was the Christmas episode where he... His first episode that kind of threw me off, and I just... I haven't watched all his. Hmm. And it's pretty good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Matt Smith just added a... I did like Matt Smith. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really like um, Peter Capaldi's uh, companion, Billy. Oh, yeah. I didn't like her. Anyway, we have Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Yeah, yeah all these sorry. school doctors. We, yeah, we... I know, that. believe me, they're not. David Tennant was really good, and he fought this bad guy called The Master, and I thought that series was really mm -hmm. interesting. So, anyway. Moving in. Let's just get together and watch that. I was going to say, that could be like a movie. Couldn't that be cinema. like a... Leadership Cinema Night. Let's do it. Doctor Who. Mm. I do. Although... To be fair, Charlie Brown. Everyone in the down, TARDIS. So what? what is this? He okay. said Charlie Brown to get shut down. So <laughs> That's true. what is this? That's true. <laughs> shut this down. Is a little too mature for us. No, no, I want to watch Doctor oh, Who. What about Charlie Brown as a dog? Yeah. Well, anyway. See, I'm the kind of person I like to know a little bit about everything so I can connect with Max, but I can also connect with Krista. I can also connect with Jared. I can connect with everybody. So I know a little Doctor Who, but you know, I also do you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu on the weekend or something, you know, totally opposite of Doctor Who. So anyway, okay, we need to pick this back up where we left off. I don't think everyone got to share. Did a few of you not share ideas the other day, right? Okay. All right, so let's, let's get our brain wrapped back around this, and then those of you who haven't shared can add to the conversation. So as we are framing and reframing the challenge for this, uh, we, we're we trying to define what we're actually going for, right? And so we talked about different ideas. We talked about different questions. We started with the questions, of course. And so the this round is brainstorming solutions so that we can say, okay, we think we have a general idea of what the solution is going to be. And we're gonna, once we're done brainstorming with that, we need to turn that into, okay, so what questions can we ask a few people to see if they think that's a good idea or not? So it's basically like a little survey, a little feedback. So that's, that's the goal for today. Uh, let's see what else we had on here. So we just had a ton of ideas. Um, but, you know, the general idea is we're trying to increase value, work relationships between the college and the community. So we had job fair idea field trip, uh, records and kind of follow-up checkup, workshops, tutoring, the jobs office, the physical jobs office itself, rotating jobs, the idea of, you know, people kind of going from one job and then, you know, shifting around to another job. So those are the things we're, we're asking. Um, uh, everyone can share an idea, no judgment. We didn't really have a problem with that. Uh, what could we roll out? So we're going to have to take this, and let's say that we find that four of these kind of cluster together and one or two of them are kind of out here, we'll probably go towards the ones that cluster together because that'll make it where we at least get a direction. And then it's not that the other ones are bad. It's just we can only go one direction at a time, and so I'll have to kind of move us towards that. So who hasn't given an idea yet? You haven't? Yeah. Okay. All right, Max, what's your idea? Um, 
idea that I was leaning you towards was um, the website, mm -hmm. a separate website off of the faith that you mm -hmm. um, But I think it'd be helpful to have it maybe linked so you could access it through uh, the main faith page. Uh, and I think that would serve as a, as a really good balance between sifting out maybe the people that are less serious, but also, um, as Jared mentioned, having it as a, uh, a resource for data acquisition and checkup, okay. because you could have people inputting data, you don't have to manually sort all that, but you can have it sort all electronically. Um, and that also pair really well with the jobs office because then it kind of takes some of the, the heavy lifting uh, out of the way up front and then leaving the, the interaction that you do have. You have something already in front of you and you can kind of talk to them about that and then pair them well with other people or other organizations. Yeah. And for those of you that maybe have never had to build a website or anything nowadays, it's really not that hard. I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, you're creating a few forms, you're creating a landing page, and you're linking it. We have a company, I think, that does the school's websites, but, you know, we could easily create a simple, there's all these different Wix and um, uh, Clover and all these other ones that you can build a website for almost nothing. So what used to be really intimidating now they make it where it's like putting a powerpoint together a lot of it is a lot of plug-in stuff so not as big of a deal as it used to be i could see the value in having a technology piece to this on the front end because then from day one you're always you know you're collecting everything the same way and not having to deal with paper and stuff like that so yeah i think also like an idea because it keeps it up to date because like the job fair that comes on campus once a year kind of comes on campus and we all go and show up for the free food and then we leave and that keeps it really up to date and uh, keeps something that like students can actually reference and actually go to. Yeah. It's like a physical thing. It's true. Just showing up. Yeah. And I think someone brought up, maybe it was me because it's so brilliant, but someone brought up uh, that you know, jobs don't just happen at the beginning of the semester too. I mean, you do have some, probably the majority are gonna, they get here and we wanna kind of capitalize on them being, you know, looking for a job. They're just kind of entering the market, but you do have people that they're kind of, they come and they're waiting to see how their classes play out or they're waiting for the end of a sports season and then they're looking for a job. And so what Chrissy's saying, does Ty Max's idea to something that would be just kind of perpetually available and, easy to update, easy for people to access. Plus, you know, people on the other side looking for workers, that happens at all different times, you know, seasonal work, and stuff like that. So they're not necessarily operating on our college schedule. Great. Okay, Joe, what you got? Um, so when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, what's a way we can keep it relevant all the time and like keep updating it because like Carlos mm -hmm. and the design thinking like you're never done with something so we have to keep working on it so I guess my thought would be the best way to do that is just keep getting feedback from people mm -hmm. and maybe you do that through a survey or we send somebody out to go talk to people for the businesses or you have meetings with the people that we sent out to those businesses um, or you could just do something on the website. I don't know exactly what that would look like, but just somehow we could just keep getting feedback about how the system is working. So kind of a perpetual feedback. The nice thing about that is then you're not assuming that you've solved it, you know, which goes along with what Carlos taught us, right? So we're not assuming that this actually is like a one and done solution. Like we have now, you know, there's no more challenge. Um, 
what we're saying is we're actually assuming that it's not going to permanently solve anything that we have to constantly be creatively addressing how things change. What if the job market dries up a little bit in Ankeny and, and now we have to take a different approach. We have to broaden our search or we have to expand the, the radius of how far out we look because, you know, jobs are changing or when they open that new Amazon location in Bondurant, we want to say, Hey, we're, we're looking, you know, for jobs that, you know, career type jobs with a whole, you know, selecting a company. So we might change what we actually do. I think the perpetual feedback and Joe, you're, you're probably onto something there that, you know, you could have a survey, which would be kind of an email instrument, but you also could do an interview. You could even have just throughout the year, like every month you, you, if we have a jobs office, we kind of calendarize, Hey, in August, we're going to try and meet with these two businesses. And in September, we're going to meet with these two businesses to kind of stay in front of them. Um, when I was a salesman, we would drop off uh, bagels and cream cheese from Einstein bagels at all of our clients and stuff. And so you, that goodwill also opens the door for conversations and stuff like that. And so might be opportunities like that or have some kind of like where we invite them all here, um, you know, periodically. Plus getting them to be guest speakers in classes and stuff like that. They're already here. Maybe we can sit down and talk to them and ask them a few questions. So, all right. Anyone else not go yet? I think Jimmy didn't go, but she's not here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so... Do you guys see anything that's kind of clustering together that would all be like in one group? Max, like, did, well, ladies first. Thanks. <laughs> I feel like what um, both what Joe and Max were saying would kind of go with doing field trips um, and like keeping it relevant and uh, showing people like an up close look at like where they could work or businesses mm -hmm. and like us keeping a relationship that is more than just like filling out forms and stuff like mm -hmm. online it's more personal so i feel like those would go together mm -hmm. all right i'll just try and like do a little linking here just to all right so you kind of have this I think that it seems like this also goes to this, right? Because you got records. I think I kind of like talked about the jobs office and tutoring, kind of going with workshops, kind of mm -hmm. like being results hub or career hub. Yeah, so it was also kind of linked to the website too. I think I think the jobs office is kind of like over all these things. Yeah, I think maybe that's the the parent idea, and then whatever we do in phase one, everything would fit underneath the jobs office. But it sounds like we're pretty convinced that no matter what we do, there needs to be kind of a home base for it, a, a web home base and a physical home base, and then a person that's kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, because, you know, there would be really no way to maintain these other things unless you have someone. And it doesn't have to be the college hiring a full-time person. I mean, it could, it could be students that get paid, you know, work-study wages to help if they're qualified. I put in a proposal with the, um, with the leadership here to do allow, start hiring students to do more administrative work and do what I call micro scheduling. I like the word micro this week for some reason. Like I, last night I was telling the drama, hey, let's do micro practices. And so I'm gonna have a couple micro donuts. Um, but we're basically, let's say you had a administrative role in the jobs office. You could go from class, work for an hour, go to class. And it's, yeah, it doesn't pay as much as work in other places, on the other hand, it's almost painless. You're just literally going in, you're putting in an hour, but that hour might be all we need to be, you know, one hour a day might be enough to maintain whatever's happening on the website, check the calendar, see if new any applications come in. And then you have like a faculty sponsor that 
you know, they're doing this is kind of, it's kind of like their side gig and like me be able to kind of keep the uh, public part of it and then maybe coordinate it with different classes, depending on what we're going through with different classes. So some of our classes, it would be very, it would synchronize really well with some of the classes. Yeah. What would that look like in the summer um, when no classes are going on and students aren't really around here? Because obviously people are still going to be looking for jobs. Yeah. Well, what I think, that's a very good question. I think we would have to account for that. Like whatever, so the college operates calendar wise on two semesters and then the summer is like this big empty time. This place is like a ghost town for the most part, except for when those block classes or modules are going on. But um, like everyone in Jordan Hall is still working the whole summer. And then I worked the whole summer uh, for community engagement. I'm doing stuff connecting to the community. And so maybe we would bring it underneath some other role that does continue through summer like community engagement. So just add that to the job description, keeping it, you know, working with the jobs office becomes a piece of community engagement, which they're actually paying me a little bit to do. So uh, it was a pretty loose job description when it started. This might become a permanent part of that to kind of justify that position. As far as administrative help in the summer that, you know, who knows, we would have to figure that out. I'm pretty good with my own administrative stuff, but let's say it wasn't me. Let's say it was someone else. You would, you'd need to somehow have that base covered. So there's also some students that are around over the summers. I mean, I true. I am, Katie is. And true. I don't know for how long, but. Yeah. And instead of the one hour a day, maybe it's someone comes in for half a day every week, or you got two people, one person doing a Tuesday half day and one person doing a Thursday half day. It might be enough. A lot of this stuff doesn't have to be turned around the same day. You just want to have you know, within 24, 48 hours, at least they know that you got it. Like you were saying that if you have like students here in the summer or if you have people here like doing internships or doing internships back home, they could right. do like the online stuff or like calling networking for like uh, state jobs, somehow still involve students even if they're not here. Yeah, um, true. I guess you don't, we're, I'm thinking like it's so 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, if people don't physically have to be here to do the, the same, People even could continue on even if they're not here. That could, sorry. Well, I'm saying some people live here. So. Yeah, and that's true too. Yeah, some people literally are. Yeah. I just felt like during the summer, like you're not going to have a lot of people like coming here on campus and being like, oh, I need a job. They're mm -hmm. going to be either emailing or calling. That's where the website could come in. Like you have people off campus looking for a job or taking internships. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be here anyway. So yeah. they yeah. can still be calling even if they're not here. Mm -hmm. Um. One thing I just thought of is, I know we talked about having a job office, but where would that office be? Because, I mean, a lot of the offices in most of the buildings are filled. Right. So who's going to have to give up an office for this position? Well, I'm thinking about kicking Dr. Kobelia out. <laughs> he's so easy going, he probably won't mind. And he's, he's never here anyway, right? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that guy is here much more than me. Um well, you know, Max, it might be where it starts out as the jobs office is that table in my office. And that is the, you know, it's kind of the spiritual version of the jobs office, right? It, it's not a physical location. It's going to be permanent, but we just need a placeholder as it grows. And then it might turn into where you had a physical office that is like there's a sign on the door with hours of operation. I think you could do it because it's someone's going to be wearing a second hat. I'm assuming it's going to be me as the faculty member. So I'd be wearing the second hat. So wherever I am, that is the jobs office. And it's not like I don't have room. I don't keep any books or anything like that. That's college. -y. So we would have plenty of space for a student to come in and interview or someone that is doing administrative work could come in and operate. You know, you could have a laptop in there and someone could come in and work on whatever. Well, unless I'm, maybe I'm mistaken, I feel like kind of the way we've been talking about the jobs office, it's more of a concept than a physical yeah, location, yeah. so it's more of an idea how we pull it off. I don't think it would be too difficult, because like you said, maybe just like an hour a day, well, I mean, not too you big. You do it for, just about anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I say, like, you really can sit down anywhere, like Hugh was saying, it's honestly just happening on a computer and doing follow-ups. It's not like you have to be in an office that has all your stuff, like you literally mm -hmm. just need your computer to check up on the website, yeah. so... Yeah, and with, um, you know, kind of an intersection with Carlos and Jeff, too, you got, you know, 
the idea of co-working and not being tied to one physical location is just going to keep growing and growing, mm -hmm. especially with, I mean, COVID is just the start, you know, in, as, as people are starting to see, you don't have to be tethered to one specific location. If you don't have a lot of stuff, if you don't have a lot of things that you have to have access to physically. Um, I mean, we're proving it every time we do a report, our library has all these volumes. Have any of you not physically been in the library this semester? Hmm. I've only been there well, for two. I was only there once because I had to grab a book there. Right. So, but many of you have done multiple reports using library resources. Um, so it's just kind of proven that, you know, you could have a jobs office that doesn't necessarily have to be a, a brick and mortar. It could be a floating jobs office. It's more tied to probably the person and the website. Website kind of is the jobs office in a way. So we had like a spot, like one designated room. Like, okay, this the jobs office is open like at grade 101 from like five to seven on. Yeah, nights. you could do a pop up. Yeah. I mean, kind of the pop up idea. It's like jobs office could literally be a, a, a table and two volunteer workers that are qualified to give a little advice and you know you could use a classroom you know to do and if we did workshops yeah. you know you're able to float those around wherever yeah like i say well the one what is the one upstairs great that's a small one on that side mm -hmm. that might be like perfect for that's like a smaller one and it'd be perfect for like tutoring or workshops or mm -hmm. interviews or I, mean, I don't think anyone ever uses it really for study because i know a lot of people use like the computer lab for study and grade 101, even grade like. Is that the one where the missions group yeah, meets? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, side it's of got the best view it's, on campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of put in, I like, I would love this. And then they looked at it and they're like, it's awfully small. So I think they're going to turn into youth ministries eventually or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if, if this is what it's going to look like, we're going to have a, some type of, online component to it we're going to have which is going to involve applications and record keeping and interviews and then we're also going to have tutoring workshops that we are able to um, get people ready so we're getting people ready and we're also getting all their information so it sounds like that's kind of the two main things um, and that's even that is a pretty ambitious start i mean to try and Get that rolling is going to take take some work so with that in mind so if we're, we're thinking that the jobs office is going to be a, a it's going to be assigned uh to a person me it's going to have other people that are going to be working through it we're going to be doing tutoring and workshops and then we're going to also be collecting information interviewing people stuff like that going out so let's let's now go to this. So what do we need to ask? And let's start with the people we want to interview right now. Let's just interview students. That makes it easy. And the reason I'm doing that is not because it's the best way, but I'm just being pragmatic. You know, you guys have the most access to students and it'd be very easy for you to ask three questions to five people, you know, by the middle of next week shouldn't be a problem. So, so let's say that the who is going to be for this round, we're going to collect information from others and this is going to continue on, but let's just say uh, current faith students. Man, my penmanship is better when it's chubby. <laughs> okay, current faith students. Um, I think that if we're looking at when and where, I think that, um, you know, it's, we're, you can, yeah, you can literally text people. So you can do it uh, virtual or in person. And we're going to do it by Tuesday night. So that we can kind of be ready for Wednesday morning to talk about it. Um, and then what do we need to ask? We need to ask things that are tied to our, our main thing. So you got the jobs office. And then out of that, we had, we said wor workshops. 
tutoring. We're going to have a website and it's going to collect data, you know, applications information from both sides, employers, applicants. And then we're going to go out and find kind of um, well, you know what, instead of, we're talking about field trips and we're talking about more, we're really just talking about relationships. So whether that's us going out, taking people to places, whether that's um, bringing people in to talk, whether that's us, you know, interviewing people, we're looking for ways to build relationships. So in the community. So this is the jobs office. We need to come up with two to four good questions that we can ask people. And um, are you guys familiar with the difference between quantitative and qualitative data? Kind of that's self-explanatory, I guess, if you know Latin or whatever. <laughs> but so quantitative data is something that has a number attached to it. So on a scale of one to five, you know, or how many inches is this, or how many, you know, miles is that? Qualitative data is more based on how you feel about something. Now, you can actually attribute a quantity to a quality. So you can say, on a scale of one to five, how do you feel this day is gone, right? So that's a way to take a number and assign it to a, a quality. But sometimes qualities are more measured in just the words. And collecting words is really valuable because we have all these cool tools now that you can do things with the words. Like, you know, you can do a word cloud. So if you have 50 people use the same word, you know, describe faith. And if 50 people use the word, you know, um, uh, academics, well, then you do, when you put all those words into a word cloud, academics is the biggest word. And then, you know, you got all these other words that are smaller. So we got to kind of decide maybe what we could do, maybe we need to, as we do this, let's think of two quantitative questions. Like, so it's, it's got some kind of like a scale, a number something. And then let's think of two qualitative questions. All right. So I want to give you a minute to think about that. Um, so that we're not having to just like all be totally cold turkey. So I'm going to refill my coffee and then we're going to try and at least come up with a couple questions. So be, and you could come up with just one question and we'll share it up here. But is it a question that is, you know, a, a word you're asking for a description, you're asking for what do they need? What do they want? What would they be looking for? What kind of job, you know, so we're, but it, it's got to kind of tie back to this idea. So they said, well, why are you asking? Well, you know, we're, we're doing a survey because we're thinking about starting something new called the jobs office where we're going to help people connect to the community. No, it's not just like, you know, uh, classifieds or Craigslist. This is kind of more because building relationships. So based on that concept, you know, what would you be looking for? Or what? So think of that while I refill my coffee. Who's got a question? 
Chair. Do you want just uh, one or the qualitative and quantitative? Just, just give me one for now and we'll kind of probably circle back in about two minutes. So. For the uh, quantitative, I ask how often would you imagine yourself using the website? So looking probably for uh, a minutes per day yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and that's the way you get the quantity, right? So how many minutes per day? You might do minutes per week. You know, like if they're a low user, they might use it, they might browse it, you know. I imagine it would change depending on what we gear the website to do. If it would be more of a one-time use kind of a thing for finding a job or if we had more resources for maintaining and right. changing. And you know that in website development, it's just like other marketing. You have to do things to drive people to the site. So maybe by adding interesting articles or their job updates every week or something like that, it drives traffic back to it. Because there has to be, people will go to anything one time, they'll click on it one time, but is there a reason to go back to it? Um, that's how a lot of uh, college websites used to really fail is they make this big, beautiful website, students come and student, and students come and join the school, and they never go back to the college website. So that's why, you know, like, they, all colleges now, they have like a news section, they're constantly updating, putting up pictures. Because if it wasn't for like pictures of my kids, I would have never went to the Bob Jones website. But I'd see my kids in different things and I'd be looking through for kids from Guam and you know sports stuff. And so you got to drive traffic back. So how many minutes would you use the site? Quick question on that. Does that, I mean, that kind of assumes you've explained the whole jobs office right. concept. Right, and so, so it would have to come with like a, we're thinking about doing, we'd have to come up with a little script, like thinking about creating a site that would create this bridge. I think it's such an, well, my, I guess my question about it is I feel like it's such an abstract concept, and then we've been working on this for weeks, so we have an idea of what it's like. Mm -hmm. For them, to, for me to be like, hey, how often do you think you'd visit a website? It'd be like, uh, they, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like the, this is like a good like maybe follow up question. Yeah. Once we've developed the concept and idea, because they have to have an idea of what the website even is. Yeah. Because if I didn't know what Craigslist was, and you're like, how often would you visit Craigslist? It's like I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so this might be a question that we would send out with a written explanation of what we're talking about with the website. That might be the best way. So maybe via email. So this might not be the one that we ask face to face because what I'm thinking your opportunity is gonna be is you're gonna text someone, you're gonna sit, sit next to someone in chapel, you're gonna sit across the table from someone at lunch and say, hey, for class, I need to ask you these three questions real quick. This one might be through the all school email. We say, hey, think about doing this concept if we did it and this is what it looked this is what it would have when we list the things going to have how many minutes do you think you would use it and that's i think a great way to measure it so and it might not be fair to ask too many quantitative questions with you know the first time out so mm -hmm. yeah i don't know if this would come under the category of either one of those questions but i feel like a question that we almost would need to ask is like if they have a job and if they're like satisfied with their current job, if they uh -huh. like it mm. to get a feeling of like what we're like working with, yeah, like, with yeah. the majority of students. All right, so that, that's a qualitative question. Well, my quantitative question was on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with your job right now? That's what I said. I said, how yeah. satisfied are you with your employer? But then like maybe you try to get deeper with them, say like IE, wages, hours, management, training. It kind of digs deeper than yeah. just like the pay or experience. Mm -hmm. So pay, experience, you know, uh, type, stuff like that. And this could be, it's qualitative in that, are you satisfied? Yes or no, that's quality. Um, or you could even ask, describe how you feel about your current job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a, because then we can get their words instead of, putting our words in their mouth. Mm -hmm. That kind of goes with my other one that I was saying is um, off of the scale, um, 
what would you do or what do you look for in a job while in school? So like, are they looking for a career, just money? Are they looking for training? Are they looking for experience? Like, just kind of seeing like what people are looking for when they come to school. Yeah, great. This one can turn into a almost qualitative or quantitative if you use what they call like a Likert scale, scale of one to five, you know, one being whatever. So sometimes it, it, you can ask those verbally, sometimes better for them to have it in print. So I'll take all this and kind of bring it to something and send it back to you guys. But what else? Jared, do you have a second question? Yeah, it had to do with my first one. So for qualitative, specifically about the website, what would you find helpful on the website? And I'm still thinking these will be more clarified. We'll be able to ask better questions once we realize more. Right. What will the goal of the site or what will the goal of the office be? Right. So what was the wording of what you just said? What would you find helpful on a website? That does whatever we're trying to get it to do. Yeah. Well, and what I think maybe we're revealing is we believe that the website is like an integral part of this concept. But what we don't know is what's the value to the, the student using it at this point. We're assuming that there is a value because it does become kind of the interface for them, but we don't really know exactly what it's going to be like. And it might be hard because a web is such a big idea and so many details. It might be hard for us to put that in the survey as far as a detailed question. So that might be a good follow-up. Maybe we, maybe what we're seeing is we have our initial, hey, I need to just talk to you for five minutes and, and get some feedback from you. That's that's kind of this purpose. And then the follow-up is after we kind of get past the next hurdle, we say, hey, we're going to roll out a website. What would you use? How much would you use it? Stuff like that. This might be part two of uh, asking questions, and it might be better if this is in writing because we might be able to get some more detailed feedback. Yeah. My question was just kind of more general, but I feel like it kind of be important to know how many people actually would need this. Mm -hmm. just, I'm not really sure how to phrase that into an hour, but um, just in general. So how many people actually need it? Would like need or actually like use it maybe, I guess. This kind of goes along with that, but I had a question like how much time would, like how, would it be worth it to spend more time and effort on finding a job that might pay better, have more experience? Because I know yeah. this is going to take way more time than somebody just sending in an application right. to check the right. or whatever, right. mm -hmm. but it could be way better for them. Yeah. But we have to find out how many people actually are willing to go that extra mile to get a better job. Mm -hmm. So this is a number. This would be more of a quality where... Um, so say that question again, Joe. So it's based would it on- Would it be worth it okay. to spend more time and have a longer process with more effort to get a better job that could offer higher pay, uh, more experience? Better environment. Yeah, better environment. Katie has something to say. No, I'm trying to like think of how- okay, <laughs> Keeps fidgeting over here, and I just can't tell you to say it or not. This is a safe space. You can no. you can say something totally, you know. So yeah. like mine kind of goes along with that. I think like because um, we don't want to spend all this time on people not use it. So mm -hmm. I like a two part question. It's like, um, would you? What are some skills you want to grow on, like interview wise? Like, do you want to get better, like communicating with people? Do you want to get like a better resume? Do you want to get like better references? Like, what kind of things do you want to get to grade your career? And then the quantitative one would be like how likely would you be to use your website or like how like would likely would you be to like consult with somebody to grow in those areas so how likely would you be to sit down with the consultant yeah yeah i was gonna say because the tutoring thing like she mentioned is kind of a big part of our thing is like having somebody help like not only watch our website but help with like interview skills and personal skills 
So, but I think that would be a huge question. Ask, like if, if like one out of a hundred students here says, yeah, maybe I'd do it. Then it's like, well, our plan just kind of got botched because we're, we got a lot of this banking on the tutoring, right. but how many people use the right spot? You know, like it, I don't want to like roll out something that's like the right spot where it's helpful. It's totally right. helpful, but people are just like, I just don't go to it. I don't want to waste my time. So it's like, what are the, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how likely or however we want to ask that, mm -hmm. how likely are you to actually use tutoring services? How likely are you to go to a one hour class about leadership or about interviewing or the process, like mm -hmm. to see if they're actually even going to come to the tutoring or the workshops? All right. You guys don't have to raise your hand. You just jump in and talk over each other. Like, like what he was saying, we don't want to just send like fake students. We don't. We can't think all fake students are great. So one way we could connect the website to the tutoring is like, okay, we list all these different jobs that we have. You can click with what you're interested in, and then like it's required to come in and get tutored. Like to okay, mm -hmm. you do this, 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 and this. We don't want to. We don't want to have mm -hmm. a bad reputation for the school. We don't want right. to like turn mm -hmm. these companies off. So it's like you need. That's like a requirement to like mm -hmm. at least come in before you go to the interview. Yeah. Before we do interview. And you could, you know, if you did that on the website, instead of saying Chick-fil-A is hiring, you know, drive through worker, say food service, you know, prerequisite, you know, if you're going to go through the jobs office is, you know, these two or three minimum things, a meeting, you know, it's like a checklist, you know, did you do your application? Have you met with a consultant? Have you attended the, um, these two or three little mini workshops. It might be something we could pre-record or do really well. Uh, and then and then um, when they're done with that, that's when we would open the opportunity for them or whatever, open the portal so they could apply. But I think like all that goes under a lot of effort. So I, yeah. like a good, a good question if we were gonna do like a three question thing to mm -hmm. ask students is just how much time are they willing to spend on it? And yeah. Because if they're going to take classes, I I guarantee you not all of them are going to want to take a class just to get a job. And I don't know how many are going to. The other them. thing, you know, something about that, because you're right, it's kind of the path of least resistance. And that's just kind of college life. And, you know, you got so many other things going on. So I think we have to, we have to be cognizant of that the whole time. So, the you know, one way you do the now well, it's time to go isn't it okay think about this we're not ready to roll this out yet i don't, I don't want to give you a half-baked survey so monday let's try and nail down the questions i'll try and we'll try and think about this a little more but think about this is there a way to, what incentives would help someone want to use if we believe that whatever we come up with if we believe it's really good for the student right we we think this is really going to help them but they don't know that yet. Maybe there's some way to incentivize them using it, right? So that's why they make gummy bear vitamins, right? We know kids need vitamins, but they taste like garbage, but you make it a gummy bear and all of a sudden they want to take one. So how can we like gummy bear this thing? <laughs> I think we're kind of basing this off the fact that we are going to provide better jobs than somebody that is just going yeah. to do a job at Chick-fil-A and like more experience or better pay. Yeah. And so if we can, provide those better jobs, but we also say you have to take these classes, people would be more, if yeah. we can guarantee that it is. Well, that might be the biggest incentive is like, you know, students that do this make a dollar more an hour, which doesn't sound like much, but that's, you know, times 20 hours, you know, times five weeks. That's, you know, that's, that's a lot, of, a lot of extra money. So, and don't call it classes though. We need to call them. Workshops. Workshops or, yeah. <laughs> fun hangout times. So. Yeah. Um, the question I, I have was, it kind of kind of goes goes off of that, but how would you like to see faith better prepare you for a job or career? Mm -hmm. So that can kind of give us an indication of what people see that they're lacking in, mm -hmm. or um, where they may see that faith has not prepared them. And then that read it to me one more time. How would you like to see faith better prepare you for a job or career? Faith. Yeah, and that might be something that we can also ask the parents when they're here next week. Perry. Okay. All right. You guys are dismissed. We will tackle this again on Monday. If you think anything, you can always.